Welcome back everybody, this is Steve KM9G and today we've got the Hamgear 3D protective case install. Stick around. It's pretty amazing the things you can do with a 3D printer. This is a 3D printed frame for the IC705 from Hamgear 3D. Mike N2HTT sent this over and we're going to take a look at this. Let me get this box out of the way so we can see what's going on. Right here, hi Steve, here's some background information on my IC705 frames. I use a PLA2 filament, which is a bit more flexible than the plain PLA, and prints really beautifully with a semi-matte finish. One thing to be mindful of is that PLA will start to deform at about 60 Celsius, which is 140 Fahrenheit, so leaving the frame in the hot car in the sun could damage the frame and is not recommended. However, ICOM gives a usable temperature range of the 705 as 14 to 140 Fahrenheit, so the frame matches the application. That's perfect. Very small printer farm, takes about 15 hours to print. And he said that he likes the YouTube content and is honored that I will take a look. And Mike, I am honored that you are honored. That is awesome. So let's see what we can expect. We have the instructions on a QR code, or you can point your browser to the URL. We have a bunch of parts. Let's get these parts all nulled out. Oh, well, there's a packing list. Your shipping should include the following items wrapped separately. Frame, two side rails, handle and bottom bracket, tripod, two backstays and two handle brackets, bag of hardware including info cards, that would be this, info card, flip up screen cover with my KM9G on it. Please contact me immediately if any of these items are missing. Excellent. Now that I've got this stuff all nice and neat and organized, I am sure that I'm going to smack into it with something because that's the... The luck that I have. That infill texture looks pretty cool. KM9G. And I ordered this in red. He has a couple of different color choices available on the website. But this is the one that I chose. This looks like the front frame. And he's got a spot on here on the bottom that he says is a 14 degree angle to make a good viewing pattern. Then there's some nut zerts in there. So there is your... 14 degree angle. Bottom plate, carry handle, face plate, side, front, a couple of uh, pieces to put on there and some other bits and bobs. Okay, next up is going to be bumping the camera. Next up is going to be removing the arc wind camp frame that is currently on there. Let's get this antenna out of the way. WinCamp has a new version of this mount out that I'm going to be looking at coming in an upcoming video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. There is the arc frame done. Battery out of the way, and there's my naked radio. Step one is to take the side handles and mount them to the front frame. So like so with these guys here. Attach the handle brackets to the top of the frame with the button head screws. And you get two different sizes of angled brackets. These are the smaller size. They go on like so, like so. The thick leg should be vertical. Which... Note that one side of the bracket is smoother than the other. The smooth side should face the operator. Oh, well, of course I did that backwards. Read the instructions thoroughly before attempting the install. Nah. Assemble the screen cover and handle by inserting button head screws from, that's these guys, the long ones. Don't push the screws all the way yet. If you have difficulty getting the screws through the holes, try twisting them in. Now place the handle and cover assembly inside the bracket you mounted on the frame in step two. Line the holes up and push the screws all the way through so they protrude, protrude through the brackets on both sides. This is easiest to do if you hold the cover flat against the front of the rig. Attach the boom bracket 
Uh, nope, attach the bottom bracket to the radio using the M4 by 16 millimeter stainless button head screws. That would be that one. Like that. That looks good. And then that is these four screws. Start attaching the frame to the bottom bracket using the screws, but do not tighten the screws at this time. They should only be screwed far enough in to remain in the holes. We'll tighten them in a later step. It's a little bit of 3D printing fuzz right there. Let me get that out of the way. I'm gonna use this screw to push the printing fuzz out of the way. Perfect. Just had to get those little guys out of the end of the, the nut certs. And look at that, it fits on there perfectly now. We're supposed to use more of these. And these are only supposed to be in just enough to hold the screw in place. So we can tighten it up at a later stage in the game. These jokers right here. And what they're talking about is putting them on the floor, dropping them on the floor putting them like so, and obviously that's not the one for that side, must be this one. Putting it like so, so that it holds the radio in place from falling out the back of the cage. So let's get that installed. Okay, now we need to tighten the screws on the bottom. And there you have it. That's perfect. And there's still room on the bottom for the regular tripod mount. Let's get some beauty shots. edit all this out. I dropped the microphone. Don't tell anybody. I didn't drop it. I just like let it dangle. It's got that, it's got that springy cord. It's okay. Anyway, this is the Hamgear 3D 705 uh, cage frame shield protective device. You can see now why I got it in red because that only matched the red rails on the FT-991, FT-891. Yeah, that's what radio that is. Anyway, there's a link in the description down below. I think that you will find this video over here to be fairly interesting as well. Thanks for being awesome.